Hey, Gunvar Coldwin is the captain of the CTF team Drang Sector, and you probably know that team because they are very successful. Gunvar does English streams every Wednesday where he talks about IT security, exploitation and CTFs. And of course you can ask him anything you're interested about. I'm always so excited about it because he knows way more than I do and it's one of these very rare opportunities where somebody who has a lot more experience and knowledge shares it with us all. You definitely miss out if you are not subscribed to him and watch his previous recordings and tune in whenever he goes live. Make sure to enable the bell and set the reminders. And just to give you an idea what kind of stuff you can expect from his stream, I'm gonna steal part from his last live stream and show it to you and to give this video at least some informational value. So here's Gunvel talking about stack cookies and how they try to make buffer overflows not exploitable anymore. Enjoy. Hi everyone, um, so I'm Gunvel Coldwind and I welcome you again on my weekly hacking live stream. If you overflow a buffer, which is a part of the local variables, you basically override this thing and you override the return address, which means that uh, you get um, you redirect the CPU execution to either your code or some pieces of an existing code in memory, which you can can use to um, to do your bidding, basically, right? To do what you will. Now, um, in case of cookies, is like uh, between. Usually between the return in front of the return address there's also something called the cookie. Now the cookie is supposed to be a random value um, that the attacker does not know. And just before the return statement, there's the return, uh, right? The function exits. Just before this, there's a, a short uh, snippet of assembly which, if a cookie is not equal to the magical value, if it's equal, then then yeah, then whatever. Um, right. Yeah, and if it's not equal, then call abort. Oh my god, being hacked. And this function is supposed to basically exit the program in a safest way possible. Maybe print some message that, hey, I mean, the, the values on the stack, they are corrupted. Something has overwritten the cookie. It's not what it should be. Therefore, yeah, you have a hacker, right? Uh, this is how a cookie usually works. First of all, um, the cookie, this cookie, right? It has to be a random value. Therefore, it, there's the requirement that the attacker cannot know this value. Because if the attacker knows this value, right? He will just over, overflow this and then write the right value here, the correct value here, and then override red, 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 whatever. And then we get to the, um, basically to the compare. And the compare is, yeah, it's equal because the attacker put the correct value there and we can return safely, right? We never call this, oh my God, I'm being hacked. So, um, so yeah, so the attacker cannot know it. And um, I guess that's the biggest requirement. And the second requirement is that it should not be able, the attacker should not be able to brute force it, meaning um, the cookie should be large enough to for the, bat for the attacker to not be able to run the exploit enough times to somehow suddenly magically get the value. For example, the cookie cannot be one byte. If the cookie is one byte, then you just run your exploit 256 times and you, s you get it, right? Like that's the probability for you. I mean, you will get it in 256 runs or give or take 10, um, depending on what method you actually choose and, and how's the output of the random generator. So the cookie must be, um, has good, uh, should have good enough length and should be kept secret and generated in a safe way. Now, if you go to Vexilium org, Vexilium is actually my previous computer um, computer club, let's call it like this. And if you go to slash pub, there are some publications by me and Mateusz Jurczyk usually. Yeah, and there's something called exploiting the otherwise non-exploitable as in, basically in 2011, we did with Mateusz Jurczyk some research on how Windows kernel generates the cookies. And uh, there's a paper, well, this paper, which you can read if you're interested, is basically, um, we analyzed how the Windows kernel for Windows drivers, how does it generate a cookie? As, as I said before, the cookie needs to be safely generated in an unpre unpredictable way, so the attacker doesn't, doesn't know it. And it turned out that um, the way it was generated, I think it was done on Windows XP, maybe up to Windows 7. No, maybe maybe without Windows 7. Or maybe even... Um, yeah, 
yeah, running on Windows XP, Windows Vista, and on Windows 7. And it turned out that the way the cookie was generated was not actually correct. Now, here's the plot twist. On Windows XP kernel, the way cookie was generated, it was basically like this. Cookie equals constant. There was a constant, there was no generation. The cookie was always the same, and in every kernel file it was always the same. So you basically knew the cookie, right? They didn't randomly generate it, you just knew the cookie. It was, it was constant. Um, well, usually in user mode, right, what you can do is you can do something like this, like... I don't know, for example, read from dev, you run four bytes, right? And this gives you a four byte cookie, which is unpredictable. Now, the problem is that if you're just running, starting your operating system, then um, it uh, it's a little more problematic because your dev, you random, your like safe cryptographically safe random generator isn't yet initialized. I mean, you just started booting the system. There's nothing, there's just like, the bootloader and the kernel is just starting. How do you initialize the cookie for the kernel? And it's um, and, and for the drivers, which you need to really um, boot really early on, like start really early on in the boot process. And it turned out that they're using, for example, like um, the virtual address of the cookie, then the um, number of ticks from the from when the CPU was executed, uh, and, and, and some other stuff. And it turned out that you could boil down the you can predict most of these numbers. Being on the system, you could predict most of these numbers. And in the end, the entropy was about, you have uh, had like 1.5 bit, which means uh, basically every three guesses you, you, you could get the correct cookie. Um, if you want the details, basically go to, again, um, Vex, uh, I'm sorry about that. Vexidium with uh, I-L-L-I dot um, org and then publication exploiting the otherwise non-exploitable.